Hey, that watches the show. It's pretty sick. Good morning and welcome to Wager Talk TV. This is Puck Time. I'm Andrew. I have Brian Leonard and the Prez with me today to break down three games plus best bets at the end of the show. And we have three great games for you. We have a playoff rematch featuring the Florida Panthers, Toronto Maple Leafs. We also have the Dallas Stars, Winnipeg Jets, and another playoff rematch with the Vegas Golden Knights and Oilers going head to head. I cannot wait to dive into all these games. Let's not waste any time. Brian Leonard will go right to you for your thoughts on the first game. Florida in Ontario to take on the Maple Leafs. There was a crazy game last night uh, against the Ottawa Senators that they had, and I believe you were on the right side there. What's your take on this one against the Maple Leafs? Yeah, I had Florida last night, uh, part of a 3-0 and night. Uh, nice run, 8-1 and right now in the NHL, back to number one on the season. Um, yeah, this is a hard game to handicap because of, as you mentioned, everything that went on yesterday. So this is maybe a game that I add, I add later on today as an actual play for clients based on the information I get. Um, in the last 10 games of 5-on-5 play, Florida has a, a goal for percentage of 54.55, an expected goal percentage of 53.49. Uh, Toronto in that same time sits at 50 for a goal for percentage of 51.86, expected goal percentage. So the Panthers basically have been about a five excuse me, about 4% better the last 10 games. On the season, if you take a look at the uh, – net goal advantage they've got a three goal advantage over toronto so the teams are are pretty close um the panthers played a very oh. physical game as we saw last night not or fighting took precedence over hockey and because of that uh concerns about who'll be available for florida tonight is keeping me on the sidelines for right now don't know if anybody got hurt in the fights uh what happened so i don't want to bite into that yet until i see who's going to be on the ice uh, Trino, on the other hand, has had uh, the past two days off after back-to-back -back losses to Chicago and Pittsburgh. And at least in my opinion, the line shows value on the visitor. But right now, too many questions to pull the trigger on them. But if you see me at a play later on tonight, it will be on Florida, who, in my opinion, is the clear better team. We'll see how this one works out. It should be a great one. Uh, obviously, second half of a back-to-back, -back, as we mentioned there, uh, Florida in town to take both take on both teams from Ontario. Excuse me, uh, Prez. What are your yes, uh, what's your take here tonight on the Maple Leafs and Panthers? Obviously, some history with these two teams. Uh, Andrew, I listen. It's it's hard to disagree that there's value on Florida, given that they have a better record. They look like a better team. They're in better form, and. Toronto is a minus 135 to 140 favorite. Why? Why would a Toronto team be a favorite here? And the answer is because the bet is the Leafs. And the reason is this is one team. Obviously, I eat, sleep, and breathe Toronto. I am a homer. I am a fan of Toronto. Toronto constantly loses to teams like Chicago. They've lost to them twice this year. They constantly lose to teams like Anaheim, San Jose, or any dreck in the league. Pittsburgh is out of the playoffs looking in. Perfect team for Toronto to lose to. Toronto beats great teams in the regular season. I regret to say in the regular season, but that's the lot I live in. Um... This is a perfect spot for the Leafs. Really, really well rested, completely over their Sweden trip. Uh, playing a team who just went through a vicious game last night in Ottawa on a back to back. Um, these are the games that Toronto win. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. This has been going on for years. They go to Buffalo, they lose. Then they go to Boston the next game and win. They go to Chicago and lose. Then they go to Tampa Bay the next game and win. I don't know why or how it works that way, but we're going to get the Leafs at their best tonight. Take the Leafs and wait. Wait for people like Brian to bet Florida and get us some more value. <laughs> Brian, I saw you raising your hand there. By what, the way, I think, you had to say? By the way, I think Toronto is growing. 
growing. That's what it was. I was thinking greater. Um, yeah, well, just so the um, the Toronto Maple Leafs expert knows, uh, Toronto's played four what I consider to be excellent teams this year. Boston, they lost. Um, Florida, they lost. L.A. Kings, they lost. Dallas. Are you doing lost. accents right now? Like, they lost. He's doing the Teddy I, Covers I, impression I, I, on you right now. Yes. Oh. Yes, I'm putting emphasis on certain words so you know what you're saying has not worked out so far this year. But I understand what you're saying. Overall, this is a team who struggles against weak opponents, but they yeah. haven't been able to beat the good opponents this year. Okay. Uh, you know, they're I get it. win tonight. Could happen. You know what? I, I think they're going to as well. Um, when I look at some of the numbers here, Panthers 4-12, and 12, their last 16 games playing on zero days rest. Uh, how penalty filled that game was. I, I watched a lot of that game, Brian, just out of pure entertainment. Um, I, I thought that that was, I thought that was one of those games where Florida really, really dominated in that one. Like if you look at the expected goal numbers following the game, you could see like that might be one of the most clearly dominated games of the year. And and this is a season where we have the San Jose Sharks playing uh, at the level that they're playing at. Actually, they're playing a little bit better right now. But um, the, the funny thing is, is I, I agree with what you mentioned there about your handicap. I think you're on the right track about not injuries, but just like, how much that game seemed to mean to the, those players uh, against, you know, and, and so weird to me seeing the Kachuk brothers, whenever they go head to head together, it's always crazy. But, you know, for, for a game that was four, nothing or three, nothing or five, nothing. At one point there was line brawls, like every single, every single shift in the third period, it seemed like that game meant a hell of a lot to Ottawa, which is funny. Cause you think that that would be kind of the game script for this one against Tam against Toronto with all that really goes into the history and the playoffs and stuff like that. But something Prez said there kind of stuck out to me. And it's something I've learned over the years is, you know, trusting the opening number, trusting that number that you see kind of that the books are giving you. And um, I, I agree. I almost respect it more with what the opener was than if it was 20 cents lower. Um, and looking at this Florida Panthers team, um, I think Stolarz has overachieved because Stolarz has actually been given some good, good uh, matchups. Brian, you talk about the matchups for Toronto against great teams. And I, I agree with you. They haven't been great, but Anthony Stolarz is the backup goaltender oh. tonight for Florida. He's had some pretty good matchups this year against some lower quality teams. He's been able to defeat, which makes his stats a little bit inflated. And Bobrovsky played unbelievable last night for Florida. I mean, they had a great defensive game. Um, but as I always do, when I'm looking at the Maple Leafs, even though they have had some good defensive runs, especially last year, I'm a team totals guy. So I will go over three and a half on their team total. Uh, take whatever Florida does out of the picture and look for Toronto to get me four goals. You know, all the stats. I, I love that bet. And love Sweet, it. Rez, yeah. And, you know, hopefully we can take advantage of a, of a Florida team that, um, based on some trends that I found, do not play their best hockey when they're on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. So uh, let's get some goals here, guys. I'll be happy Andrew. with that. Yes, sir. Uh, Brian will get a kick out of this. Greg Hags, he's in the chat room. He writes, uh, Andrew is too young to know what a real brawl looks like. So well, true. I mean, obviously, I you've do, seen I do highlights. have the internet. and <laughs> you do? They have the internet in I, Halifax? I remember uh, junior hockey. It's actually a shame. Uh, so there's obviously the Canadian Hockey League consists of the OHL, WHL, and the QMJHL, and that's where the team that I live plays in. Uh, that's the, the team, the, the, the league that they play in. Anyway, the, the, when I was a kid, like the amount of brawls that I saw in that league were unbelievable. Like I would like, I would be asking my parents, like, can I go to this game? I want to go watch the game because I knew it'd be like so many fights. I wanted to go to the game just for the fights. Yeah. That league right now, guys, banned fighting. There's not even fighting anymore in that league. Like it's, and it's, it's interesting. Cause like these kids are younger and I get it, but they're coming to the NHL now and they're not as prepared for the aggressive, you know, the violence that the, the league really has. But Man, like these guys were like 17, 18, having stage fights, like line brawls. Trust me, like I know I'm young, but I've seen some brawls in my life. I've seen some, maybe I'm not still, in person. I'm still stuck on when I was a kid. From there on, I didn't hear another thing you said. 
I'm like, well, I'm a kid to you, gray hair. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> uh, guys, really quick, I, I, I know I'm talking. We're talking about the sides and things like that. We don't want to take too much time on this game. We never give out overtime props on this show. Do you guys think it might be worth a sprinkle? This is kind of one that did stick out to me. That's like, man, you don't think Prez based on the spot? No, dude. Florida is on a back-to-back after a vicious game coming into a well-rested Toronto arena. No, nope. I I would say alternate line minus three and a half. Ooh, <laughs> okay. He's taking his gummies early today. He's taking the gummies. They're kicking hey. in early, Brian. Yeah. Yep. But, I, but you know up, what? I, I, I do think that, uh, that, that you know, Guys, Toronto has five regulation wins on the year. They're the number one team in the league in three-on-three overtime, I'll tell you that much. They they haven't had that many. They have as many regulation wins, I believe, as San Jose does. Okay, like, can we move insane. on? I don't need to hear from a Montreal so, fan about the Leafs. Over, overtime might be a, a decent look, I'm just saying. But I like that team total. Uh, and Brian waiting on some information and Prez looking towards the Maple Leafs. Guys, if you are new uh, to Wager Talk and you want to try out some packages, whether it be a three-day, seven-day, 30-day, uh, you can take 15% off uh, anything for your first purchase. So uh, no promo code necessary. You just sign up at wagertalk.com. You can also head over to sportsmemo.com and uh, grab a handicapper of your choice and sign up. Uh, we always preach the long-term I saw Prez, uh, you tweeted about it last night. I mean, uh, when you're on a 10 and one NBA run and your 5% loses, people should still be super pumped about how great your run has been. And I'm on the yeah. same page as you with that, right? Andrew, a- Andrew, I want, I want to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about that on Wager Talk today with Teddy because I did have a 5% play last night. It was the Pelicans' first half. They did lose. I lost my 5%. And then I won my 3% in college basketball. So on the night, I lost a whole 2%. Now I am on a 10 and 2 college uh, basketball run, 10 and 2. I'm also up profit in NHL, NBA, and college basketball. I, it's like I beg you guys, I plead with our clients if you are going to buy sports picks don't add the worst variable of all to the equation is today the day variable Mm -hmm. isn't there enough variables we have to deal with you know puck luck you know shooting percentages referees foul calls inches time who needs the variable of is today the day? Yeah. I'm up in Absolutely. everything. Buy our long-term packages. I cannot stress this enough. Teddy was on a set is on a 17 and 2 NBA run. 17 and 2. He lost his 5%. That was one of the two that he lost. Would you want why just pick a 5% play and buy it? Buy a week, buy a month. Plus, it saves you a shit ton of money. Later on in the show, can I uh, mention my daughter's new business? Sure, I'm okay. definitely gonna be. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be actually buying uh, for um, for some Christmas gifts. Uh, Brian, let's go to you for uh, the Dallas Stars and Winnipeg Jets. Man, two teams in the Western Conference doing very well, but I'd argue that the Winnipeg Jets' success has been a little bit more of a shock to people. And the success that Dallas has had here. We've got Dallas around the minus 120 range. No surprise. Total is at six at some shops, but those are going away. We are seeing some six and a halves, actually. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Well, if it gets to six and a half, I'm not, I'm not big on uh, totals, but I may take a look at the under here. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in that regard. But over the last 10 games, 5 on 5 play, Dallas goal four percentage of only 42.86. Expect a goal of 54.83. They've been out scored in five on five for the last 10 games, 24 to 18. That's not Dallas. Dallas giving up 2.4 goal, five on five goals a game or in the five on five is not the way they play. They should be a defensive team. Um, they clearly have some positive luck regression coming, but is this the team to do it against? 
Uh, Winnipeg's a team that's uh, playing very well right now. Uh, while Dallas has underperformed, the Jets have actually overperformed. Their goal for percentage is a whopping 63.41, expect to goal 48.36. So they're way over their heads right now. Dallas is way under their heads. Normally, I'd want to play Dallas in that regard. I don't like the line here. Um, you know, when you take a look at um, or, uh, Winnipeg, they've outscored the composition in a 5-on-5, five 26-15 five, to 15, the last 10 games. So they're scoring 2.6 goals on 5-on-5. Five five. Dallas has given up 2.4. I don't expect either one of those to continue in that regard. On the season, when you compare the two teams, Dallas has a two-goal advantage over Winnipeg. So these teams have been very competitive. Uh, Stars are coming off a five-game homestand in which they posted a two and three record. Uh, this is a team that has traditionally been very good at home. They haven't done it this year. Uh, they beat the Jets in this building 17 days ago, three to two. So it's a revenge situation for Winnipeg. Uh, they had the five-game winning streak snapped Sunday against Nashville, uh, but the spread on this game doesn't give us enough advantage to play this either way. Uh, if it does get to six and a half, I'm going to take a look at the under. We'll see if that happens, but as of right now, I'll be passing on this one. It's a tight game, and it, it's hard to predict, predict these tight games. And sometimes you can use the information that um, that you see from tonight to to handicap games moving forward and fi- try and find that best bet uh, for the future. Prez, what do you think about this one? Obviously, a, a, a tight matchup here in the Western Conference. Yeah, listen, Andrew. I mean, I literally echo everything that uh, Brian says. Uh, this is not a game I'm going to be betting. You know, I, I, I want to stop and explain something because I bet a lot of totals. And I want, I want to explain sort of conceptually what I'm looking for when I'm making bets. I'm looking for teams that are consistent. So when you look at a team like the Arizona Coyotes, you can consistently count on them to score. Montreal Canadiens, Andrew, they went through, I haven't looked of late, but they went through like 15 games, 12 games, where they scored at least two goals every single time out. I would rather bet an over on a team that scores two goals minimum every game than a team that scores five one night and zero the next. Mm. I can't figure out how to bet on teams who score five goals one night, zero goals the next night. I need consistency. These two teams fall into that category where tonight could be 7-4. You know, Calgary just beat Dallas 7-4. Dallas allowed seven goals. The night before, it was 2-1. You know, Pittsburgh... Uh, Winnipeg can go out there and score five goals and then the next night put up one. I lean on the under on this game because I believe that both these teams want to play to the under and I believe that their identities, especially Dallas, is to the under. But these are extremely inconsistent teams to count on to either go over or under. And as far as the side goes, man... I would go towards Dallas because they've lost three of their last four and Winnipeg has been uh, won five of their last six. And I think Dallas is a better team. So their market price is low right now. So I would lean on Dallas and I would lean on the under. But man, I don't I don't want to touch this game. Who the hell knows? It's a tough one. I think that I, I would lean towards the Dallas Stars side. Uh, Brian mentioned the road home splits here. I mean, talking about a Dallas team that's performed at a high level uh, on the road, five and one their last six games. And I like what you mentioned there about the, the more motivated team, you know, and to me, it's not just the more motivated team. It's the fact that Winnipeg was on a streak and then that streak finally got snapped. And sometimes when that streak finally gets snapped, you find yourselves go through a little bit of a lull, you know, whereas you have, the Dallas Stars that just lost two games, including giving up seven goals to the Calgary Flames. I think that we see a very focused effort from a team that has almost performed better on the road this year than they have at home. So I think that they're they're my team here. Um, statistically, they have bounced back after giving up five plus goals in their previous game, which is surprising in general, just to see them give up seven goals against the Calgary Flames, even though Calgary has certainly turned it on. Um, but 
I like Winnipeg and I like what they're doing this year, but I, I think we can all agree that they probably were overachieving, right? Like Dallas has had a great start, but a lot of the numbers would indicate that they deserve that great start they've had. Whereas Winnipeg has probably won a few games. They might not have deserved to win. So uh, I'm going to lean towards the Dallas stars side here, guys on the road. Um, and you got to wonder what this price would be at, at home, right? I mean, I think you're actually getting a decent number here on the road for them. And, uh, this is a matchup I think that they'll be up for after two tough losses, uh, losing to Vegas and losing to Calgary. Uh, also, they're very well rested, haven't played in a handful of days. And um, so the travel spot isn't really too much of an issue for me. As far as the total, I would lean towards the under, but based on the inconsistency of these teams and, and Dallas being involved in higher scoring games, it's kind of a shocker. Uh, Prez talked about the totals here. I mean, these are two teams that in the Western Conference two years ago, we would say 100% we're going under. Um, but right now, even these clubs are, yeah. are moving towards the over recently. So uh, it's a pass for me on the totals, but I will go towards uh, the over, or excuse me, go towards Dallas on, on this one as far as the side play is concerned. Uh, let's go back to Prez for his thoughts on the Vegas Golden Knights and Edmonton Oilers. Prez, uh, you gave out a winner to us last night with the under in Calgary and Vegas. What do you have for us tonight? in uh, Alberta as uh, Edmonton plays the Golden Knights. You know, Andrew, I, I, I listen, I didn't bet last night uh, any uh, NHL, as I mentioned on the show. I did give out the under, but I was really hoping that Vegas would win last night. Uh, they're now, they've now lost two in a row and four of the last five. And they're a wounded beast. And I don't want to pound against a wounded beast even though I do feel like Edmonton is the right bet. The problem is they are minus 140, 150, uh, give or take. I really like Edmonton here, but I can't get to the window, Andrew. The line is too high. Vegas is wounded. Uh, I'm going to lay off this game, but man, oh man, I really, really wanted to bet Edmonton. So if you read between the lines... I'd probably bet Edmonton and know that I'm going to regret not betting Edmonton. Well, I mean, you talk about looking at records versus what a line is right now. 14, five and three, the record for the golden Knights, seven, 12 and one for the Edmonton Oilers. And Brian, I know in your handicap and you're not worried about the team's records. Well, uh, you constantly talk about that and you no, know, you either press, but the number here, obviously back to back situation, goaltending and Edmonton playing better hockey. But I always find an interest and look at the standings and look at kind of the last five to 10 games and then look at that opening number. And so there's got to be a reason that that's at a certain way. But Brian, every year I find myself, you know, and, and every sports better, I think is like this a little bit where you're saying, why have I not been on this streak? Why have I not bet this enough? Like last year was the Boston Bruins. I think everybody in the world regretted not taking them all the time. I, I waited for a flat spot to come for the Bruins and it just, it never came. They broke a record. Well, that's how I feel about overs in the Oilers games. Like yep, yep. every single game, I'm just like, no, no, I'll stay off this one. And it's 4-1 after the first period. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on this one, Brian? Vegas is obviously not going to be happy after last night, but they're certainly slumping right now. I'll touch on this in a second. I just don't want to uh, talk about, Press was talking about consistency and consistency. When you play a team, that's very inconsistent. He, he, I, I'm assuming he joked when he said he's playing over the uh, minus three and a half or whatever. Those are actually when you play teams that are inconsistent that have, what the, in the mathematical sense, they call it a long tail. Those are teams that you do want to do that. You, if it, if a team is very inconsistent, you want to take the chance on them winning by a higher margin or losing by a higher margin. When teams are consistent, those are the games that I look to, you know, you mentioned overtime. Those are the games that I'm looking to play maybe in overtime on. So, um, yeah, there, there's certain ways to look at them. And if you have a team that's been as inconsistent as Toronto has, as Edmonton has, those are the ones that you could definitely see one team winning by three or four goals and then yeah, give a night point. because of the talent. So those are the ones that you want to go out and play that plus money by saying, okay, we'll take Edmonton minus two and a half or something tonight. And I think in the long run, those are the way to play them. Um, I did have uh, a play last night. I had Calgary. I was one of the few. 
I was out with uh, Buster last night. We were watching the game, and uh, I, I took Calgary because I've been fading Vegas on a regular basis. Uh, that's the team I follow. I follow the entire league, but that's the team I know the best. And, um, you know, you take a look at what Vegas has done. At one point, they were severely outplaying their metrics. Uh, when they had that big run early in their season, their expected goals were about 54% but they were like in the 67% on the goals that they were having. So that is starting to re regress here uh, big time. And when you take a look at the last 10 games of five on five play during that time, their goals four percentage, which like I said, early in the season was about 67%. It's been 40% the last 10 games, their expected goals 55.79. So if you watch Vegas during this streak, they're still getting good shots. Uh, they're getting a lot of breakaway opportunities. They're just not getting them in the net. Uh, they scored just 10 goals on five-on-five -on -five play the last 10 games. I'm not going to put my money on a team that's scoring one goal a game on five-on-five -on -five and has to worry about getting uh, getting the other team in the penalty box to take advantage of it. Uh, Edmonton has a goal for a percentage right now of 50 and an expected goal of 55.24. So they're playing better. If you remember just a couple of weeks ago, they were much worse. They were about a 17 point differential between their goals for and goals, uh, expected goals. So they're getting better. They're not there yet, but they're getting better. Um, so they've underperformed all season, but it started to receive that positive regression. Now, uh, Vegas last night in Calgary, losing two to one with five seconds to go in overtime. That has to have taken a lot of heart out of this team. Uh, they're in the midst of playing 11 straight games in different cities. Uh, this is not a good schedule for Vegas. This is going to be, they knew coming in, this is going to be a hard stretch, but they've underperformed here. And this is also their third game in four days. And they're playing without their top two, two of their top defenders. Uh, the Oilers are seeking playoff revenge. They've outscored the opposition the last two games by combined 13 to two. Uh, Edmonton's a hungry team and the Knights are just secure for that right now. I hate to root against the Knights, but Edmonton to me, and, and I agree what you were saying about the price. The price is there for a reason. Uh, Vegas isn't playing well. Got the back-to-back -back games, 11 games in 11 different cities. Edmonton's the play tonight. Look, Brett, look Brian, I, I believe that's how hockey is. You know, I, it's it's a streaky sport. It really is. And, and you know, when teams are, are, are feeling it, they have chemistry with their lines. When the puck is bouncing the right way, you know, and I think that you used to say, I used to use puck luck, and you haven't been saying that phrase as much anymore, but it's true. But it's not as much like the players are just getting lucky. It's just like things are working out for them because, you know, their passes are that much sharper or their shots are hitting that best part of the, the net that it's, it wasn't hitting before and things like that. Of course, there is, you know, there is luck involved. But um, when I look at this Vegas Golden Knights team, you're right. It is a perfect example of a team where all the correlated numbers state that they were overachieving. And as far as Edmonton's concerned, we're underachieving. But the crazy thing is about Edmonton is that realistically, guys, it's not just on the goaltenders. It's the defensemen, too, not back-checking, or the forwards not back-checking and helping out. But I looked at the numbers in November, the entire month. Edmonton isn't even bottom 10 in expected goals allowed. So they are they are bottom 10 in actual goals allowed, but they aren't even bottom 10 in expected goals allowed. So based on their entire season so far, like their goal differential oh. per expected is completely off. Like it's, it's off more than I've ever seen, you know? So it's not just been Jack Campbell. that has been the problem. It's not, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just Stuart Skinner. It's the entire team and their defensive uh, struggles, I guess. But um, this team should actually be playing at a way higher level than they are. But here's my beef with the Oilers. I knew this would happen. The second that a coach gets fired, everybody in the world loves to bet on that team, right? It's the, it's the old adage. I like the Panthers. Who have they actually, who have they, de de who have they defeated? The Seahawks, the Islander, or the Seahawks, the Kraken, yeah. the Islanders, the Kraken again. Uh, the Washington Capitals, who aren't very good. I, I don't even care about the record. I still don't think the Capitals are very good. So they've, they beat Seattle twice. They beat the Islanders. And then they beat the Capitals. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, Edmonton's back, baby. This team is back. Well, who have they actually won a game against that's great? 
to me, this is their biggest test so far. Um, and I'm actually going to take them in the first period uh, to win this one. As, as pissed off as Vegas is going to be, I don't think that pissed off is a way to handicap games. Edmonton's playing better hockey right now. They have the rest advantage, and I love that what you just said there, Brian, about how many cities they've been in over the last, was it 10 games you said? That's incredible. Um, so I like Edmonton, but I like the first period here for them. I've noticed something with Edmonton. They don't really come back in games. If they win a game, it usually means they won the first period. It usually means they had a good start to their game. So I'll just stick with the first period money line here for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, and that will be my play. Guys, uh, I'm going to touch on this one in my best bet, but we do have some time, and I'm going to put you guys on the spot here because uh, I got a message from Zach, uh, who is a loyal uh, Puck Time listener and viewer. He wanted our thoughts on the Penguins and Predators game today. Uh, I have that in my best bet, but Brian, do you have any thoughts on that one? And no pressure if you don't. Uh, Zach just messaged me. He's going to the game, and he wanted to know uh, what we thought about it. We already had the games decided, so... Um, no pressure if you don't have a play, but any thoughts? No, I, I, I think the line's correct. Um, but I do want to, before we get to the next game, I do want to get your, your guys' opinions on Minnesota since they did have that coaching change yesterday. Because this line, I mean, it's 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 gone down since it, the opener, but there's no way that Minnesota is a one, 160, should be a 160 favor over St. Louis without the, without the coaching change. Um, I just want to get your opinion before we go back to the games on that. Well, I mean, for me, Bry, you know, uh, St. Louis doesn't play overtime games. So I like Minnesota tonight, and I'll take them in regulation. Um, they, St. Louis hasn't played an overtime game in ages. So I, I personally like Minnesota, and I would have played Minnesota regardless of the of the coaching change. The line's too high. So I'm going to look to play it in regulation. And uh, so I, I, I like that play. What was the other game you asked about, Andrew? Uh, Predators Nashville. and uh, I like, Penguins. I like, the, I like Nashville. Small, small line. Like you mentioned with uh, Washington, I don't believe in this Pittsburgh team. Uh, so if I'm going to get, uh, if I'm going to get a real small money line against them, I'm going to take, yeah, I'm going to bet them. Hey, I'm going to hijack the show for two seconds here. Uh, well, guys, Prez, my, before, uh, Prez yeah. really, really quick, after after you do that, just head in right to your best bet for us. Well, I'll just give my best bet out right now. Vancouver in regulation. I know it's minus 170, but it is what it is. I think there's a lot of value there. A team, team has uh, lost a couple of games now. I think three of their last four, they're playing Anaheim. Anaheim is not a good team. They're at home. Uh, I think they get it done. I also lean on the over in that game as well. Guys, I'm going to uh, mention this on Wager Talk today as well, but my daughter, who is 22 years old, I cannot believe I have a 22-year-old kid, uh, she has a new business. It's called TheGameTowel.com. TheGameTowel.com. Take a look at, the, at her new business, and if you want to purchase her product, use the promo code FIRST20. That's right, Andrew. I'm giving out a promo code for my <laughs> daughter's new business, thegametowel.com. And what it is, is it is a beach towel that has a chess and checkers board embroidered into the towel. It comes with a pocket. It comes with the pieces. It comes with an inflatable pillow that goes into the pocket. And the towel is of high quality. So the game towel.com use the promo code first 20. I'm really proud of her. It's a great idea. I love it. Prez. I'll definitely be grabbing one or two. Uh, a lot of family members love board games and love the beach. So uh, Christmas gifts, hopefully they can get there in time for Christmas and I'll definitely be, uh, be grabbing Thanks, those. Uh, Brian, what, what what do you have for us today at Wager Talk? I know you're handicapping several sports. I think I saw you had an NFL 5% play up. Is that correct? I do have a 5% play going on Sunday. Uh, I also have uh, one play up right now in hockey, but I'll have more as the day goes on as I get more information. Um, so that'll be up. And once again, back to number one this season, number one history. You're, as, as, as Prez would say, 
if you're looking to bet hockey, um, you might want to check us out for long periods of time, and I'd appreciate that. Um, I'm going to play the Arizona Coyotes as my best bet here. Um, Tampa Bay has not been playing well. Vasilevsky played the first two games since he came back from injury. He'll, I'm assuming he's not playing tonight. Uh, Joe Hansen will be in goal. Uh, Tampa Bay's been lousy on the road all season long. Uh, if you take a look at season to date data, the Coyotes actually have a two goal advantage over the Lightning. Um, I think Tampa Bay is an overrated team, and they've got their backup goalie in there. Arizona is a team that has not been playing well, but they play very well in this building, uh, the Mullet Center. So I like Arizona here, and you're getting them at plus 100. So that's I always like to play the underdogs. Give me Arizona. Awesome. I love that, uh, Brian, and best of luck to you on your 5% NFL play. I know it's only uh... – on Sunday, and here we are on this show on Tuesday. But guys, make sure you grab that play early in case some lines do move around. And we always stress those all access packages so you can get those from Prez or Brian. And first time users, 15% off any package over at wagertalk.com. Uh, and speaking of which, I have a 5% play going tonight in the NHL, fresh off a huge winner over the weekend with the Vancouver Canucks, uh, winning that one in blowout fashion, and a 5% play going for me. And you can use the promo code BIGBET15. That's BIGBET15 to take $15 off my 5% play. Get that to just $20, BIGBET15. Uh, and I actually have a play on my best bet is going to be in this Predators and Penguins game. And as much as I agree that the, the Penguins don't really have a bright future, I like how they're playing right now. And I think that Nashville is an overachieving team. Their metrics, as far as their shooting percentages and some games they've been involved in and they've done well, I think it's similar to what Brian talked about with the Vegas Golden Knights. The numbers have to slow down. I sense some regression here with this team. And I think Pittsburgh's coming into their own now. A reminder, they had several new players added to their roster over the summer at the start of the season. That takes time to gather chemistry and get things together. So at minus 125, I feel like Pittsburgh does well here in this spot and takes care of business against the Nashville Predators. So a uh, great show. Uh, happy to have Brian here and Prez with me. Uh, Prez and Teddy on Wager Talk today at 12 o'clock Eastern time. So many more shows here on Wager Talk TV. Guys, please do me a favor. Do the three of us a favor. Hit the like button on this video on the way out. And best of luck with all your wagers tonight. Take care.